Hi, everybody. Um, I am really excited to be here today with uh, one of my mentors, Professor Rahima Jabarbe, who taught me, among other things, uh, pretty much everything I know about community development. So when we think about um, more inclusive organizing uh, around the community, um, what kinds of individuals, organizations uh, do we try to include in, in those kinds of collaborations? Uh, well, through the comprehensive rational planning approach, most departments within cities and states reach out to organizations such as civic associations. Most municipalities and counties throughout the country do have civic groups. These are not incorporated. These are volunteers who care about the quality of life in their neighborhoods that just happen to be part of a district, you know, either a councilmanic district or a senatorial district, right? And have created these voluntary vehicles whereby they try to understand what's happening by interacting with their neighbors and with other um, groups of people in their neighborhoods to find out what is it that people are most concerned about. What do people believe is needed physically, socially, economically in their neighborhoods? And also, what do people not want? <laughs> and then those are the groups that most of our planning departments that use comprehensive rational planning as the method, they'll present to these groups. Now, depending upon so many factors, not all civic associations are the same. Some have representatives from class, from groups within their neighborhood that have degrees, that have understanding, that have businesses, and maybe many of the civic associations operate in low wealth communities, many operate in moderate wealth communities, and others operate in very high income communities where the majority of the residents may be professionals. So even their needs would be different. That's important to understand. So a, a low to moderate wealth neighborhood that has several civic associations possibly, their concerns about housing may be very different about the housing concerns in a neighborhood or an area where all of the housing, like 99% of it is home ownership and is in good condition, right? And so there's concerns. Those are two very different types of communities and neighborhoods, physically, socially, economically, educationally. And I've definitely witnessed and been inv involved in opportunities to try to help real estate and housing departments, planning departments with state, county, and local community, local municipalities, plan how to bring information and to understand that some of that information needs to be um, explained. You can't just put a piece of paper together and think that everyone who reads it has this background of knowledge and insights as to what this means. So, the other forms of community development really do speak to not so much solely the land that's going to be developed or reused or recategorized. The other forms of community development put people and place as part of their areas of focus, not just the land, not just the place. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, so when we think about developing collaborative partnerships with communities, uh, you know, across socioeconomic levels and backgrounds and, and um, interests, uh, what are some of the challenges we might run into trying to sustain these kinds of partnerships and what can we do to overcome those challenges? I honestly believe that before you can even talk about sustaining, you have to really understand what mechanisms, what outreach, what types of 
overtures would be made to different groups in any neighborhood or community or city in order to believe that you're bringing together the right mix. And I'm, I'm sharing with you all definitely that transparency, that ability to express to each group why, what, for what purpose is really important. And one of the things that's happened in our country through these types of areas of outreach, sometimes it's, um, unfortunately, it's just to get somebody's approval. It's not to get their input about whether this would be a, uh, a very worthwhile initiative or project or program. And we're going to talk about what's the difference between a project and a program. Okay. Um, how it would benefit or not benefit the people who are being brought together, representing these different types of organizations. It could be civic organizations, social organizations, unincorporated, incorporated, and that's another piece that's really important. And are you bringing, is someone trying to bring all of this together to get real input about direction and outcomes and what ways things can happen? Or is it just to say, don't you think this is a great idea and shouldn't we do it? We need you to say we should do it. Not you work with us to do it, but we need you, all of you different yous, to say to us, whoever the us is, could be the private sector, could be the public sector, or even already a partnership between the public and private sector. And they just need some type of, um, the community, you know, the community agrees that this is what we should do, or this is what should happen, and we are the ones who should do it. So when we're working with a, a community organization and, and we're representatives of that community organization, and someone with more powerful interests does show up and want to kind of have their have their way, right, and get our rubber stamp. How, how, how do we respond to that? How, what is a productive way to overcome that? Hmm. Well, hopefully some work has been done beforehand so that the different community and civic organization leaders, and I don't just say leaders, representatives, okay, have some, they've done some work themselves prior to coming to a meeting, okay? They've been invited. It looks like they need to support or add value to like a, a business development plan that may not even be in their neighborhood specifically, but it's in their quote district, right? And it may even be adjacent to where they live. So whatever the initiative uh, might be, the best thing for the uh, community and civic representatives and those people who are really trying to be the voice and make certain that their needs and everybody else's needs are on the table, they, they need to plan before the meeting. And they need to ask for some materials before the meeting. Just because you get an invitation, oh, please come to this meeting, we're going to talk about what we would uh, apply to HUD for as an example to provide uh, low income housing down payments, okay? Or we're applying to HUD to assist some of our quote businesses to be able to develop and open uh, different types of for-profit initiatives in the um, kind of depressed neighborhood market area you have. <laughs> You have to ask for material. You can't just look at an invitation and go, oh, it's about this. Well, what about that? Give us something to review prior to when we come to the meeting. Where are you in the process? What are the qualifiers of HUD or the Department of Economic Development at the federal level? And so you need someone to help people think about well, what information do we need to go through and understand prior to going to this meeting? Because the people at the meeting have been engaged for maybe a year or six months or even three months 
whatever the time frame is longer than what the people who are being invited because they represent the community, right? They represent the public. So they, they really need to understand what are we walking into? And do we really have the ability to make a change if we think that there's something in this plan, which they haven't seen, but somebody is gonna verbally, and usually it's verbally, explain to them. So don't wait, don't accept, I'm coming to the meeting where you'll tell me, ask for something in advance, like at least two to three weeks in advance, so that these working people, retired people, whomever, they have the opportunity to go through the material and get a real understanding of what they're being asked or not asked to contribute or to entertain. Sometimes you're just entertaining something that others want to see happen. Does that make sense? <laughs> and this is all about helping to prepare people. And they're very, oh my gosh, it's just very few, especially public officials who try to prepare people in any neighborhood or any town for what they may be asked to agree with or not agree with. And I hope that public administrators coming out of Delaware State University will be, will be those types of public servants. Yes, you may work in a department of planning at a county level or city level. You might be in public works. You might be anywhere. Please help those people who live and work in those communities that are going to be the focus of citing something to know what to ask about ahead of time and to be given real information about how much impact, not input, it can be input, and, but how much impact would the input have? Can they change anything? Can they add anything? Can they say, you know, that's not really a good idea for where we are, whether it's about housing or economic development or business development, whatever. So we've gotten to talk about quite a few things. Um, and I was actually gonna ask you, what would you say to a young person uh, leaving Delaware State University's MPA program? Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> And what would you want them to know about being leaders in their community? Oh, wow. Mm. Well, I think really getting past that your leadership is based on a position. For those in public administration, you really have to go outside of the boundaries because you are engaged. I don't care what type of department, you know, whether it's licensing and inspections or housing and real estate development, oh, human resources, oh goodness, Department of Public Works, all of those, each and every one of those areas has a direct impact on the quality of life of the people who live in your county, your city, or your state. And you've got to keep that as your, you know, focus. We have to think about this spectrum of people that what we do and what we don't do has an impact on. And it's not just them, it's everybody in their families, in their neighborhoods, in their houses of worship. It's really, uh, public administration is a major commitment. And I don't think all the time that we're teaching the levels of, by which those of us who work in public administration are impacting societal quality of life. Well, thank you for that. And <laughs> thank you for talking with me today. I appreciate this so much. And I'm sure all of the students are going to uh, learn quite a bit from our conversation today. So thank you so much. Um, and I know that we'll be talking again soon.